All right, so in example number two, we're just going to dabble in uh, graphing an exponential function when a is greater than one, right? And so by definition, in its formality, uh, basically when a is greater th than zero, so that's our base, so let a has to be bigger th than zero, uh, but not one, uh, then that means that we're going to define this then as an exponential function with a base of a. So specifically, we're going to be graphing um, f of x equals 10 to, to the power of x, and then, and then we'll find its domain range in y-intercept, or intercepts, so I guess we'll find out what it is here. So let's just kind of uh, first explore what um, a to the power of x even looks like, like when, when a is greater than uh, 0, and even specifically when it you know gets 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, even bigger than 10. Um, so let's go ahead and explore what that's going to kind of look like right here. Um, and that just may out, may um, like help us kind of figure out what we're looking at here. So, so obviously here, the definition said when a is not equal to 1. And as you can see here, when a is 1, we have a straight line, right? Because uh, 1 to the power of anything, 1 to the power of 10 million is still one, right? So that's why they're saying that every point is just going to be the point X and then the Y value one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one. So that's why we're not going to use that particularly. But though, uh, if A is bigger than one, right? So let's just go bigger than one right here, like 1.6, uh, two. We can see what this graph is uh, looking like right now. And this right here is going to be our typical exponential function here. So, so I'm going to kind of just go back and forth right here. Notice what, what happens as A gets bigger. Stays the same shape, right? It's just it's increasing at a greater rate, right? So the steepness right here, if you will, like a roller coaster, right? I mean, it's just getting steeper and steeper, you know, like as compared to like two, right? I mean, like if it's two, I mean, that's still pretty steep right there, or 1.8, but even if you, I mean, bam, I mean, this is getting super, super steep right here. Um, and uh, take a look at this y-intercept. Is that is that y-intercept changing at all? I mean, we haven't even got to what, you know, what happens when it's small values yet, like when it's less than, than one. We'll get to that next. But when it's bigger than one, no, right? The y-intercept is staying, stays the same. It's actually always going to be at zero one, and that should make sense, right? Because uh, anything to the power of zero is one. So when the x coordinate is zero, then our y value is uh, um, one. So what I want to do right here is, so what happens when a is ten then, right? And what I'm going to do right now is just create a little table here of that, and so we can kind of see what that looks like here. Um, so we can see that these values change as well, but let's just put it at 10. And we can see here some of these core values, which are already kind of pointed there for us. We have 0, 1, right? Right here. Uh, we have 1, 10. And then we have 2, 100, right? So I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit more than that to, to see that. And unless you're going by tens or something like that, then you're probably not going to fit that on your graph. Um, but what's interesting is what, is what happens as you move to the left? Like, does this touch the x-axis? I think that that's something we're talking about. I mean, like, I can keep zooming in right here, and it just kind of seems that the gap gets wider and wider, but does it actually ever touch? I mean, it looks like it's getting closer, right, to the x-axis. It's getting closer, but as I keep zooming in, the gap gets bigger again. But then if I keep going to the left, it gets smaller and smaller. So really, we just got to kind of think about this, right? What is happening as x gets smaller? Well, we know that when x gets smaller, that, um, let's just go back over here, that when x gets smaller, let's just do uh, 10 to the negative 1, uh, 10 to the negative 2, 10 to the negative 10. So what does this actually mean? Well, we know that this means when you take the reciprocal of it, this is going to be 1 over 10. This is going to be 1 over 10 to the power of 2. It's going to be 1 over 10 to the power of 10. So this is like a super, super small number, right? I mean, imagine 10 to the power of like negative, you know, 50. That's going to be 1 over 10 to the power of 50. So, I mean, 
Essentially, that's like zero, right? I mean, that is so close to zero, but is it technically zero? Well, no, right? So in the same way, this line really, it never touched the x-axis. It's what we call an asymptote. The line x equals or, or y equals zero is an asymptote. It never touches it. It gets so close, but, but it never really uh, touches it, though. Right, so let me just zoom back over here. Um, so here's here's our graph again. Uh, y to the power, or um, f of x equals 10 to the power of x. Right, so let's go back here. So now that we were able to kind of explore that, um, and I'm just going to plot some of those major points, right? So we know that we had the point uh, 0, 1, and then at 1, 10. And then at negative 1, right, meant 10 to the negative 1, meant 1 over 10, so a tenth. Well, I mean, I mean how are you going to really graph that, right? Someone's going to make it kind of like real small right there. But there's no way to make this super accurate because we're just going to get really close to the x-axis. So I'm just going to kind of show it to kind of go like that. And that's kind of horrible. <laughs> that's why I'll just say, hey, look at this right here, right? This looks a lot better. Um, but now let's just do the, the rest of those things that we want to find, uh, such as the domain, right? So of all of the x values that, that are being used, our domain, right, is we're going to say that it's going to go from negative to infinity, right? It's going to move all the way to, to the left. And then it's also going to use the entire x-axis over here. So I'm just going to put all real numbers or you can do the negative infinity to positive infinity. And then for the, the range, the lowest y value is zero. And it's actually never going to touch it. So that's why I'm going to use a parenthesis because it, it never touches it. And then it's going to go up forever. So um, infinity with a parenthesis. And lastly, y intercept, we can see that right there. Bam, at uh, zero, one.